Hey everybody, I'm Mr. Hefner. And you, I can only assume if you're watching this video right now, are going to be or are in one of my uh, English courses. And this happens to be the introduction to English 11 College Prep, which I've been teaching for about 10 years, although uh, I started at Wiser in 1984. What I wanna do in this short video is kind of give you an overview uh, to the course and tell you a little bit about me and, and expectations we have, and then we can follow up uh, when, when I see you next time. So let's get started. All right, so first and foremost, I wanna stress that Schoology is the heart of everything we do. Schoology is your friend. So um, many of you got introduced to Schoology when the pandemic hit and, and teachers started using this. Uh, I was using Schoology long before that. In fact, I was using Schoology before Conrad Weiser even had access to Schoology. The important thing to keep in mind here is Skyward, which a lot of people use to go look at their grade, uh, is nothing but a records keeping system. It shows you your grade and not much else other than that. Schoology, on the other hand, is a learning management system. And in here, uh, you'll find the entire course. I have put every single resource we need uh, to do well in this course here in Schoology, uh, and it's structured. So every day, uh, what you should do, whether you're in person or whether you may be out on a snow day or a sick day, uh, or possibly during uh, the pandemic, if we're doing scout remote learning or something like that, uh, you will come in here and it will automatically land over here. Let me tell you what, let me grab my highlighter here because I can probably show things a little better. Over here, uh, you see there's something that says updates. And when it lands on updates, you're going to see first and foremost, the lesson plan for that day. Always read it, read it carefully. Uh, especially if, if you're in school or out of school, there may be special instructions that pertain to you and your situation. I'll include the links to everything that's in there as well. Another thing that you might do is uh, there, there's this column over here which says upcoming. You can click on the calendar to see the whole month, or you could just look to see what's due that day. Uh, what happens sometimes is students just go there and they do whatever is in that list. And quite honestly, it may not all be for you. That's why you always wanna look at what the lesson is uh, for your situation every single day. Another thing that Schoology will give us is all of your assignments will be in here with descriptions. So if you don't understand uh, something that I explained in class or that you might've missed, you can read the description of the assignment. I'll have the rubrics so you can see exactly how your assignment is going to be scored. Once it's been scored, uh, it may have comments from the teacher, but you'll also get to see the scored rubric and, and see how you did. Um, you're also going to use this uh, to communicate with me. And so uh, there is up in the upper right here, kind of hard to see, uh, but there is this little uh, kind of envelope thing for mail. Uh, if you need to communicate with me outside of the classroom, I want you to do it through a Schoology message. Do not send me an email, right? The problem with email, unfortunately, is I've had email for a very, very long time. And the amount of junk that comes in is unbelievable. And so if you send me an email, I may not get to it for a long time. If you send me a Schoology message, you go right to the front of the line because those Schoology messages come directly to my computer and to my phone. And I will respond to every Schoology message as quickly as I can, unless I'm actively teaching another class or if it's after nine o'clock at night. After nine o'clock at night, I don't answer messages. Uh, you'll get a response from me after 5 a.m. the next day, all right? Uh, but everything's in here, and as you uh, progress through the class, you will see these folders become available to you, uh, and the entire textbook is in here as well. So Schoology is your friend. Some of the housekeeping type things that uh, a school district wants me to go over with you really quickly is uh, in Schoology, you will, you will find uh, the course syllabus. And so in college, a course syllabus might be, you know, 10 to 20 pages long. Uh, this one's only two pages. High school syllabi tend to be a, a lot shorter. What you'll find is a description of the course here, and hopefully you already know that because that would have appeared in the uh, program of study. So when you picked your classes last year, we assume that you read the course description so you pick the right course. Uh, objectives for the course are here as well. And then unit by unit by unit, we go through this course uh, until finally, uh, how, how are you gonna be graded and what, what skills do we want you to have at the end of the course down here? 
and textbook and resources are listed here as well. And as I said, I have all of those scanned into Schoology for you. What about me? A little bit about me. I've been at Weiser a long time. I started in 1984. I was 22 years old in that photo. That was my official school picture that year. And uh, in fact, I, I had some of your parents in class. They probably, maybe they didn't tell you that. I don't know if they did or not. Courses that I teach at Weiser, uh, I have always taught ninth grade in some form. So for every year since I've been here, since 1984, uh, I've taught either uh, ninth grade college prep, ninth grade English, or uh, ninth grade honors English. I also teach 11th grade, which is American literature, one of my favorite subjects. And I wrote a course, uh, which is all Shakespeare. It's an elective only. It, it happens every two years for 10th, 11th, and 12th grade students. And that's all we focus on, nothing but Shakespeare. We do uh, six or seven plays throughout the course. It's a fun class. It's not some, uh, we, we do academic and scholarly stuff, of course, it's Shakespeare, uh, but we don't take Shakespeare too seriously. Shakespeare wrote for the masses, he wrote entertainment, and, and we have a good time with the course. Uh, another course that I teach is called Writers Guild, created that one back around 2007. It's, it, again, it's an elective that happens every two years, and it's for students who, who love to write. Uh, they work in a guild with one another, supporting each other uh, to produce all kinds of things, from poetry to short stories to novels to uh, nonfiction essays. And then at the end of the course, we publish a book, always. Uh, and on the screen, you just see uh, three, three books from the past, but we've done a total of eight of them now. Uh, also professionally, uh, I, I got my bachelor's degree in secondary education from Penn State, and then I went on and earned my master's degree from Wilkes University. Uh, I have a bunch of other classes from uh, other schools, uh, Kutztown and, and Lehigh, and uh, a place called Brandman University. I took that one online, never even stepped on their campus. And in 1992, uh, I had a career-changing experience when I got to be a fellow for the National Writing Project working with the uh, Pennsylvania Writing and Literacy Project out of uh, Westchester University. Uh, and that sort of changed the way I look at what I'm supposed to be doing uh, as a language arts teacher. And I even got to serve for a few years as uh, their co-director for technology at, uh, at the Writing Project, which was uh, exciting. I like to travel. Uh, I'm not somebody who wants to travel through Europe in four-star hotels or five-star hotels. I, I like to take a tent. I like to hike. I like to take my bike. Maine is one of my favorite places to go and, and just chill out. Uh, I'm a bit of a Civil War buff. I've, I've given some uh, lectures on various aspects of the Civil War. Uh, I like being a buff because I can study what I want and what I find interesting and ignore the rest. I don't have to complete any course requirements or, or take tests. I, I try to get to at least one Penn State game every year uh, in Beaver Stadium, but I watch them all on TV. Big sports fan when it comes to uh, Penn State sports. Uh, I like all kinds of music. So I, I picked some progressive and classic rock groups that, that I grew up with and, and still love here. But the reality is uh, I listen to almost everything. Uh, and so uh, music is such an important part. I saw a quote not too long ago that said, uh, life without music is a mistake. And I think I agree with that. And uh, I owe so much to the, the wonderfully talented people who create music and then share that with the rest of us. And uh, recently, I, I picked up an old, uh, an old hobby of mine when I was 17 years old in high school. Uh, I, I came across a, a five string banjo and I was gonna learn how to play that thing. And I, I played around from my 17, early 18 till I went off to college, left it behind uh, and, and never touched it. Uh, but when the pandemic came along and I found some time on my hands, I dug up that old banjo, uh, started messing around with it, uh, later found someone I could take lessons from, bought a better banjo. And uh, so here I am at my age learning a new musical instrument and it's been just a lot of fun. Now, uh, another thing that I do is genealogy work. You've probably all seen the commercials for Ancestry.com on TV. I started researching some of my uh, ancestors uh, way back when I was 16 years old and heard an interesting family story and I've been doing it ever since. I use Ancestry quite a lot now because it, it keeps me from having to go to libraries and visiting cemeteries and exciting stuff like that. Uh, but I have over 1,500 of my ancestors' research now, uh, and it's work, like I said, that I've been doing uh, for the better part of my life. Uh, as far as movies and television go, I'm not a big uh, you know, electronic media kind of guy, but when I do, 
I want movies and, and things that help me escape from the world. So I like fantasy, I like science fiction. I am a huge Doctor Who fan. So if you, if you like anything Whovian, come talk to me. We'll be friends right away, I promise you that. Uh, and then, you know, this year, uh, the year that I'm making the video anyway, uh, Apple TV started with some original programming. I came across Ted Lasso. If you haven't seen Ted Lasso, check it out. Uh, it, it was the feel good show of the year and I never watched an episode of, of that without coming away from it feeling better, just feeling better. And then uh, as far as uh, pets go, this looks like I have a, a whole corral of, of, of cats at home. I have three cats. There is Watson. Watson is, is right up here. Watson was uh, my first and uh, he's a full voting member of the family. He, he, uh, he thinks he's uh, a human. He acts like a dog. He's definitely not a cat. I don't know how that happened. Uh, so Watson's in a couple of these pictures here. And then uh, we had a rescue. Uh, this is Minerva. My son named her for a Min Minerva McGonagall, if you're a Harry Potter fan. Uh, you see her ear is tipped here. The little top part of her ear was cut off. Uh, she was uh, part of a program where they were just going to kind of like uh, spay her and then turn her loose in the wild and let her be a, you know, kind of a, a neighborhood cat or something. But she was so sweet, uh, they decided to find a home for her. And that happened to be with my family. And then our, our, our newest family member here, this is Loki down here, my silver and white guy. Uh, Loki was also a, a rescue. But his story is interesting because he was actually rescued off the streets of Kuwait. And uh, his rescuer, who was a, an Italian citizen living and working in Kuwait, thought he was such a sweet cat. Uh, she was feeding him when he would come around outside uh, that she made arrangements to get him a, a plane ticket. And she flew him all the way from Kuwait in the Middle East uh, to Dulles Airport near Washington, DC, where he was picked up by a, a local uh, cat rescue. Uh, and I adopted him from that. He's a fantastic cat, a beautiful boy. Uh, very well behaved and incredibly vocal. Uh, I think he knows like at least 300 words. Some of the things I have to go over with you, but I'm going to do it really quickly because you're smart and you can read. Uh, you have a student handbook. We used to give out hard copies. It's now preloaded into your school issued laptop. So you can uh, be sure to take a look at that. Uh, I just want you to know right up front that uh, schedules are schedules and teachers do not have uh, the liberty uh, to ignore them. And so check your schedule, make sure you're in class on time, especially if I have you for a first block class, all other classes are important, but it is not uh, up to teachers to just simply decide uh, when you can arrive late. So please uh, don't come to class late and ask me, can I just excuse it? Cause it's not something I have the liberty of doing. So watch your schedule there for tardiness. Uh, dress code is listed in there. I don't have problems. I haven't had problems anyway. I don't want any problems uh, with dress code. Uh, but be sure to check this out. Make sure that the way you come to school every way complies, every day complies with that. Uh, lavatory, I, I have always had a problem with a as a teacher uh, with requiring students. We call you guys adults. We say act like an adult, be like an adult. You are an adult. You know, you're 17 years old by, by now. Um, you shouldn't have to ask permission to use the lavatory for something that everybody needs. You know, it's a, it's a natural bodily function. So I am so glad that this year we got e-hall pass. The way we'll use e-hall pass in my classroom is one person at the room should be out at a time, no more than one. Uh, if you need to go, you simply open your laptop, you, you generate your own e-hall pass. I'll see it pop up on my computer. It does not require approval. Uh, you go, you come back, you end the pass. We don't need to discuss it. You don't need to get my permission and you don't need to you know, announce what you're doing in front of an entire class. So I'm so glad we got e-hall pass. As far as electronic devices go, uh, if, if you read the uh, student handbook, it's pretty strict about certain things. For example, you may use uh, your phone for texting when you're at lunch or in the hallways between classes. Now, why am I saying that? I'm saying that because I know uh, sometimes a student will be on the way to the library or on the way to the lavatory and pull out the phone and send a quick text while walking over there. Just so you do know, any staff member could confiscate your phone if classes are going on and you're in the hallway texting. The policy does not allow that. Um, as far as these devices go, though, I know that these devices can, can be very helpful. 
I, uh, you know, I, I often multitask, have two computers up or a computer and an iPad and a phone. And, and I've had my, my students use their, uh, use their phones very effectively when they're writing and, and doing research. As far as music goes, I'm perfectly okay on, on if you're taking a test or working independently, or if it's a, an in-class reading day, if you have your uh, ear, ear pods in and you're listening quietly to music, for a lot of students that helps them kind of block out other distractions and that's good, so I have no problem with that. I do want you to understand though, this is important, Modern day phones tend to have cameras and even video cameras in them and people snap pictures without really thinking. It is a violation of the law. If you make a video or take a picture of anyone in class and you do not have permission from everyone that appears in that picture, even if you decide to just kind of like pop out your phone and take a selfie and there are people behind you, see students are required by law to come to school. We don't also take away their privacy. And so you, you don't have a legal right to be taking pictures and making videos in, in the class. If we're doing a project or a performance and, and you get the permission of those involved uh, to record that for them, that's perfectly okay. But just be careful. You cannot just simply snap pictures and make videos anytime you feel like it uh, in a school. It is against the law. Uh, fire drills uh, from my room, there's a sign hanging over the door. We'll go over that when you're here. I'll guide you uh, as we leave the building, but uh, we're required by law to have at least one fire drill every month, and so we will do that. Now, as far as the content of this class goes, it's an American lit class, and that's what we'll be studying. But my goals for you for this year are to leave as a better reader. You know, when you were young, you could become a, a better reader very easily. Now that you are a reader, uh, it's harder to improve. Almost everything that we learn is like that. It's easy to learn at first and, and then we plateau and it's, it's harder to climb above that. But one of my goals is to help you become a better reader, a better writer. I've got a, a system in this class for, for teaching essay writing where uh, I'm going to help you write better essays in less time with less effort. I know that sounds like an infomercial, but I can show you the feedback I get from my 11th grade students every single course. They agree with me that it works and they're grateful that we did it. Uh, and it's kind of fun actually. So uh, I promise you that program is coming up. I'd like you to become a better speaker when you have to present uh, a better listener because listening is a skill. We tend to tune out, we tend to hear something and then think of something else uh, and, and, and we stop following along. But most of all, I want you to be able to leave this class as a better thinker. Most people do not think and they don't even realize they're not thinking. You know, for example, if I, if I give you a long division problem to do, most people would think, oh yeah, I'm thinking as I'm doing this, but all you're really doing is repeating a process that you've been taught. You're not really thinking about. It. Thinking involves logic. Thinking involves avoiding logical fallacies, evaluating sources, uh, understanding that there are different levels of belief, disbelief, acceptance, rejection. Uh, and, and we're going to work with all of that in this course. So I, I do hope by the end of the course, your critical thinking skills are better than they are as you come into the class. You might be great now, but everybody can get better at that critical thinking skills. We're, we're going to kind of look at these experiences. These come to us from something called the Pennsylvania Literacy Framework. Uh, and in this class, we're going to be studying a lot of uh, literature together. It's an American lit class. We'll be going by historic time period. So we're gonna start with American lit back in the colonial period. We're gonna move up through the American Revolution and all the way up uh, through World War II. And uh, I'm, I'm going to be teaching you uh, the essay writing through some, a, a program I call Friday Essays. I'll, that, there's, there's so much to teach there, I'm not even going to try to explain that now, but I, I promise you it works and it sounds scary. It sounds like, yo, writing, uh, I promise you it's gonna work and you're gonna like it, trust me. Uh, and then finally, independent reading and writing. See, a, lo a lot of people will read the assignments that they're given, but the reality is, and I do believe this, um, the reading that you choose to do for yourself over the course of your lifetime is going to provide you a better education than high school ever could. And, and yet school sometimes turn people off to reading. Uh, and I wanna make sure we don't do that. So uh, independent reading and writing is going to be important. We're gonna do some language studies, some grammar, spelling, punctuation, capitalization, all that kind of stuff. Uh, but we're not gonna go through a program. 
We're not going to just do things because it's been written in a curriculum. Uh, what I do every week is I look at the assignments you're giving me, the essays I'm getting from you, and I, I, I look for those things where we could maybe be doing a little bit better. And then I build uh, mini lessons uh, for language study out of that. And then finally, lifelong learning is, is just all about acquiring the skills uh, that will make you be able to teach yourself throughout the rest of your life. You know, school, the, the years that you spend in school through 12th grade and even college are just a small part of your existence. And we don't wanna stop learning when those are over. Uh, but there are certain skills to be able to learn uh, effectively and, and teach yourself. So that's another goal for the course this year. Now, uh, the independent reading, when we're on a normal schedule, in class on days one and four, we'll take some reading time. Uh, when schedules are a little bit off, maybe maybe we're doing a hybrid, maybe we're doing a full remote, uh, maybe it's a snow scout remote learning snow day or something like that, uh, we won't do that. But I do want you to be reading something that you enjoy at all times. And each week, you're going to check in with me by Sunday night uh, about what you've been reading that week. So my goal is that I want you to read every day, all week long, and then once a week, check in with me. So there's a seven day window. Now, what's important about this is that it means you can never do this late. Sometimes I take work late, right? Some, I, I do believe that if I assign something, it's important and I want you to do it. And I would rather have you do something late than not do it at all. But if the goal is to read every week and check in with me every week, there's no way to make that up. If you don't read this week, you can't read this week next week. You can't check in with me about this week next week. And so these independent reader responses and the, and the schedule are gonna be really, really important. And we've got a separate lesson for you about how that whole process will work. All right, so the last thing is, if you look in Schoology, you probably have a, a short assignment to now introduce yourself to me and to the class. And we're gonna use Flipgrid. Uh, you probably used it in some other classes, but Flipgrid lets you make uh, very quickly a very short video that then gets shared with everyone. So you'll wanna go back, when you're done with this video, you're gonna wanna go back to Schoology, look at the assignments coming up, find the assignment for Flipgrid, click on that, read all of the instructions, and then complete that Flipgrid video uh, by the deadline. All right, I know that was a lot and I know we went really, really fast, but we're gonna spend a lot of time together. And what you didn't get out of this very short video right now, I'll be reinforcing over the first couple of weeks of this course. Uh, it's really important to me that you understand how the course works and that way you know what to do in a course so that you're not trying to learn the procedures of the course at the same time we're working on learning the content. So I look to see you in class very soon and I thank you for staying with me till the end of this introductory video. Be safe, guys.